Welcome back to The Watch, and Oz, what did we just watch? We just watched Ghostbusters, The Frozen Empire. The Frozen Empire. Which isn't about Disney's assets. <laughs> <laughs> who made this one? This isn't Disney. It's... I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, hey, Nathan, you reckon you can look up who made this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah pull it up for us, Nathan. Th thanks, Nathan. Um, all right. Oz, what was your impression of the film? And we'll start non-spoilers, as usual, give our thoughts or review, then go into spoiler things. I didn't mind it. You didn't mind it? I didn't mind it. Honestly, I give it a 7.5 or a 7. Yeah. Um, there was the obvious political stuff they're going to have, uh, which I did notice every single <laughs> one of. Probably more than you. Probably more, yes. Um, your, your radar on that stuff is very sensitive. Yes. Uh, well, I like to call it um, schizophrenia. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, the pattern recognition. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, But otherwise, yeah, I enjoyed it. It did have some things that I'd say were objective flaws for oh. the plot. Mm -hmm. Um but otherwise, I enjoyed it more than I disliked it. So this is it. I think I'm glad that you're sharing that perspective because I think for a, a lot of casual moviegoers, that there is something that they'll enjoy out of it. Mm. Uh, for me, I found it very boring. Yeah. Yeah, very boring. And uh, then uh, the flaws just start to stand out more, mm. and there are some big problems with uh, the the story and narrative here. Mm. And I think one of the biggest failings of, not only this one, it's similar to the issue with the last Ghostbusters film, which, which is still see. in the reboot. Yeah, and you, you haven't seen it. It's missing the charm of the original Ghostbusters. Like, the original Ghostbusters, you basically, you got to say, Bill Murray basically carried those films, mm. okay? His humour, his wit, and the chemistry he had with the cast made those films work. Mm. This Ghostbuster film, same with the other previous remake, not the all-female one. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no. um, this whole moment I forgot it existed. It feels like, take Ghostbusters and remove all the charm from it, uh, most of the humour, with a cast that doesn't have great chemistry, and that's what you're kind of left with, and then throw in some big plot points, and it's pretty flat for me, but I'm an empty husk. Sony. Sony made this one. I wonder if this Sony. will help him out. Yeah. Honestly, um, it felt like a lot of uh, new humour. Have you heard of, you know, that word? Yes. Yeah, when you put uh, N-U. Like, well, well there, it's the whole um, subverting the dramatic moments with, you know, yeah, yeah. jokey kind of uh, thing. And that, that just annoys me now. And that yeah. wasn't funny. Yeah, it annoyed me when they did it in Avengers. It annoys me now. Mm. But otherwise, like, there were some things. Yeah, there were some things that I, I, I noticed you chuckling at. And, uh, what were they? Some of the, you know, like, um, moments of uh, when he was trying to sell the orb, and this is even in the trailer, where it was like 40 bucks, 50 or something. Like, that, like mm. little things like that. And uh, they might work. So one of the disappointing things for me, right, is I wanted this film to be better than what it was for me. And mm. I think people still will enjoy it. Like I said, I'm a very critical empty husk when it comes to, you know, lots of media. Um, but there's stuff I like. There's stuff I like, all right? Mm. House of the Dragon, brilliant. I'm really enjoying Shogun at the moment. Mm. Um, this just did not do it for me. The thing is, though, it didn't feel uh, um, like it was trying to do a disservice. It didn't feel... What's, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, nasty or... Mean. Well, yeah, they weren't trying to deliberately tear it down. Yes, they, yeah. they, they, it wasn't a type of film that felt like it disliked the source material, where there are a lot of remakes or sequels, uh, adaptations, where you can sense this cynicism in it, where they yep. just, they hate this stuff, yep. and uh, they just want to make a mockery of it. And we see that with, like, Indiana Jones' Dial of Destiny, yep. where there's this bitter resentment to uh, just... The, the the property and everything and i did not feel that in this mm. it actually felt like this is a film made by people who do want to give justice to the property ghostbusters mm. but for me just didn't have the knack the ability to pull it off mm. which uh, that's disappointing because i respect the fact that they are trying to be respectful to the property like mm. the um the uh, respect that they tried to give to nostalgia, mm -hmm. the little nods they had at the other, the old cast come in, and those are all good things. Mm. But then the story and uh, and the way uh, the plot carries out and the lack of interesting 
things tying together, the lack of chemistry, really just makes it flat for me. So again, comparing it to previous Ghostbusters, right? Like, again, Bill Murray was carrying it, and I don't really see a character who's doing that. Paul Rudd is oh, there, he's trying to be a bit funny and humorous. Mm. Doesn't really work. He's not the main guy. They tr they clearly try to make Phoebe the the girl, the the new you know main figure. Yeah. And it's interesting. I find her an interesting character, but not enough to carry the film. What were your impression of her? Um, my impression of her was always looking for the signs of Mary Sue because obviously she's mm. a female main character. Yeah. I will do that. Here's the thing I was thinking. Right. Mm. The entire time I'm watching this, I'm thinking about all the ways it could be worse. <laughs> Because um, just um, just think about that for a second. Yes, it could there be are... very like that's the thing. It's not a insane woke dumpster fire mm. where there are there's woke coding inbuilt into yeah, it. Yeah, very a... very. It's like a mm. it's like butter scraped over too much bread, <laughs> yeah. but you can't taste the butter. You Almost. can't believe there's no butter. There are, like there were some like, hmm, but it's not. Like, you know, Ant-Man where I know socialism is a charged word where it's just a slap in the face. Mm. So because of that, it's mostly uh, negligible. You can ignore it. Um, and I don't think it's going to like have an impression on kids or anything. Mm. But there were signs and we'll get into those signs uh, more specifically. But because of that, it's like, OK, it could be a lot worse. Mm. Like for me, I'm sitting on like maybe a four out of ten maybe okay. three or four um because there were like moments and it you're right it could be a lot worse could you imagine mm. if the if the lead girl was just like the worst just yeah. horrible yeah and getting like praised for it whereas mm -hmm. paul rudd everyone was happy to be like no you've screwed up here mm -hmm. you're being bad and she did, did Kinda, she, learn she from wasn't it? really in the wrong then she was like getting blamed for stuff that and she was trying to do the right thing mm. um and then she was getting blamed for it and so you know, like, there is that, not really Mary, but she is smarter than everyone else. She is the key to figuring out how to stop the bad guy mm. at the end. Um, but she is, is she constantly telling everyone why they're wrong and showing them up? Not particularly. I mean, uh, it, it's, it, she's not, I wouldn't call her like this massive, insufferable Mary Sue. Actually, I think there's something there to enjoy this character where she's this, nerdy girl that feels disconnected from the world mm. trying to find her place and the only thing she finds focus or direction and purpose is the paranormal like spangler she's mm. she is like you know she the only person she can connect with is you know her grandfather and that seems like this character is actually made out of respect to you know mm. uh spangler and so I, I like i'm okay i'm on board with it but she's not funny She's not, not particularly, particularly no. like it's, that's what I mean. She can't carry yeah. the th the film, and she's the type of character that needs a, another character to bounce off of to actually bring that levity or, or something. Mm. They try and do it with the Asian kid; he does not manage it. No, no. Paul Rudd does it. That's what I mean. That the, the, the charm doesn't it isn't really there like the originals, which just makes mm. it a lesser copy, even if it's a sincere attempt. Mm. Oh yeah, definitely yeah. not as good as the originals. Mm -hmm. um, but it, I just imagine that all the ways it could be worse, and there are so many things mm -hmm. they could have done. Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh yeah, like well, I mean, have a look at the female Ghostbusters, where oh. they just crap on. Like they literally bring what? Um, uh, what's his name? Paul Murray. Murray or, um, they bring him in to kill him in the in the thing, and just absolutely they make kill it. Paul Murray in the Ghostbusters. Did you not see the female Ghostbusters? I avoided all knowledge of it. Okay. Is it like like why am I forgetting? Is it hang? Uh, Bill Murray. They, they they bring him in just to kill him off. And mm. and it was just like this cynical kind of thing where it's like girls are taking over. Yeah, and so, of course, right. it could be much worse. They tried to give respect to these original characters. Mm. Bill, he still seems checked out. Like, like, he felt like he wasn't really in the film. It was just tacked on. Yeah. And I have a feeling because he just doesn't give a crap. And, and so, one, he probably was really expensive like if you want me to suffer through because he doesn't care yeah. you have to pay me through the nose which means his appearances had to be really limited mm. and he was barely in the film well if anyone's going to pay through the nose it's hollywood <laughs> but um yeah it felt like it felt uh like uh woody house in in the star wars movie they just did uh you know 10 years ago uh what was it the force awakens force awakens you know where he's like he's there his body's there but he really is just kind of harrison ford you mean what did i say 
um, someone else, not Harrison oh, Ford. The guy who plays Han Solo. Yeah, Harrison Ford. What did I say? Like, you said someone else. <laughs> Dan Harrison? So, no, it sounded like Woody Harrelson, I thought you said. Oh, okay. Well, he is a great actor, let that be known. He never phones in a performance. <laughs> um... Yeah, yeah, Harrison Ford, but he had e even a more presence in the in the um, uh, you know mm. um, uh, first Disney remake. I've even forgot. I'm glad I forgot that name. The Force Awakens. Thank you yeah. for reminding me. <laughs> so yeah, Bill Murray was barely in it, but hey, Dan Aykroyd had a much stronger role in it, and same with <laughs> the other Ghostbuster. Mm. And so they that felt respectful. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, all right, so. I'm still sitting on like a four, maybe even a three, because there are some problems narratively, like big, dumb, dumb moments where it's yeah. just like, what? And the entire plot of the film rests on some really dumb moments. Mm. Um, and we're going to talk about those in detail now, in now spoilers, mm. you've been warned. But, uh, and the pacing, the pacing of the problem. Pacing, too. like I said, it was boring for me. I was just kind of sitting there bored. And, and the, because then I was starting to check out even when, the big thing started to happen. I was like, uh, "Tell you what, they did better White Walkers than Game of Thrones. <laughs> Way better." Now, having said that, if you're not as much of a snob as me, I think there is something that casual viewers will enjoy about mm. this film. And if you're after a film that's just n that's not overtly propaganda, propaganda woke mess that is um, making a mockery and bastardizing the source mm. material, I think you could appreciate. Ghostbusters, Frozen Kingdom. But like you're saying, not overtly. See, I have two minds about this, um, because I'm schizophrenic. Uh, <laughs> there's the side of me that enjoyed the movie. It was a light-hearted, mm. you know, uh, fantasy comedy. And there's the other side of me that's hyper-fixating, looking at the signs and symbols, and mm. seeing what they're really trying to say. Now, you really don't want to hear that side. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll keep it locked down. <laughs> uh, yeah. But so, yeah, you're 7 out of 10? 7, seven, seven out of 10, yeah. Yep, yeah. And I'm, like I said, about a 4 out of 10. Uh, all right, spoilers. Going, this is your warning, now we're going into spoilers. Okay, so there are some narrative elements that are, that are issues, but for me, the film started quite strong. I think the opening sequence where it just gets into them trying to capture a ghost and mm. some of the dialogue really characterized the group quite well. And mm. it was working for me. Mm. And then nothing really interesting. Then it just started to fall really flat. Mm. See, I'm a bit of the opposite mind. I started off immediately on guard. Oh, really? Like, oh, look, the girl boss is taking control. You know, mm. she's, she's diving out of the thing into New York traffic and... Um, mm. But I don't know what it was that won me over, but something did. Something kind of, you know, let me put my guard down. Mm. Maybe I need to think about it more. But yeah, it's mm. I was on guard immediately, man. Yeah, yeah. So what kind of woke coding did you notice in the film? We won't go too far into it, but our audience wants to know. So like, for, for instance, was it just me or did it really look like they were queer coding the Phoebe. Yes, yes, yes. Two ladies of the lesbianic tendency. Uh, now, like, I don't really care, but at the same time, you know why they did it. Look, they did it because of my representation and LGB, all that stuff. I love lesbians. I love lesbians. I absolutely love lesbians. We know you do, us. If they're both hot. Yes, we know. So uh, I was generally okay with it. She's 15 in the show, in the movie. In real life, she's like like 20. She's probably older than me. She's probably older. Um, I don't even want to look that up. Grace McKenna, she's like... Uh, she'd be like 26, 27, maybe? Well, now because you're trying to... Uh, she said 17. Grace McKenna's not 17. She was born in 2006. You well, the, impor <laughs> the important thing here is... Well, here's what. Okay, so I should. Okay, let me change that. Fine, she's ugly. There you go. No, no, all right. Let's well, go. I like to appreciate a beautiful young woman. That's what she is. She's a beautiful young woman. Moving on. All right. It's. It felt like <laughs> you, you'd know why they did it. Yeah, yeah obviously. You, you know why. And the thing is, though, it is subtle enough that I don't think kids will pick, but, mm. but it's also really clear yeah. if you just pay attention. And so she meets a ghost who's a girl. And she is giving some very strong eyes to it, and They're and she's like, and she's doing the whole awkward and then I want to hang around with you more and yep. be friends. And then she ends up doing something drastically dumb, which is crucial to the plot, 
just so she can be with the ghost. Yeah, she showed a ghost the weapon stockpile. Not only that, like, like this is where the plot really falls apart, right? Mm. So the plot is ancient evil ice god trapped in a copper brass, or copper ball, yeah. right? And the evil god wants to break free and he needs a ancient phrase from a dead language spoken for him to break free. Mm. No one really knows it anymore. Some people kind of reference it, get get close to it, and then that lets the ice power out and they get frozen, but it doesn't let him out. So he needs like a full chant or something. Mm. And he can only, this god being can only control ghosts. Well, we might, we might be mistaken there because, uh, what do you call, at the, you're talking about the beginning, right? Yeah. Um, remember the firekeeper was there. Yes. And she was the one who was holding it. So, so did she, she really? She probably sealed it. Okay, she probably did. Or who knows? I don't it's know. weird, but because the, the chant gets recorded on, you know, this little uh, um, wax kind of recording from the early nine, uh, 20th century stuff. Mm. And uh, and so they aren't exactly clear about what, but if that was a full chant, anyway. Mm. But the, the God's plan, right? It, because it, control, it can control ghosts. Yes. But then instead of controlling the female ghost, that's the, the uh, that Phoebe, the character, gets uh, interested in, right? Uh, it makes a deal with this ghost mm. to uh, manipulate Phoebe mm. to uh, fall in love with her or get a, a, attached enough for Phoebe to separate her spirit mm. from her body so the frozen god can then control her while she's separated in her spirit form to get her body, because there's still a connection, to speak the ancient words that releases him. Mm. That is holy crap convoluted. Yeah. And how the hell does this ancient deity god being know that Phoebe and the Ghostbusters have a device that can separate her ghost from her body? And that's where the show's like the movie starts to jump the shark for me. I was like, I actually know how. how? You missed this one, right? The writer who wrote the the thing, he knew. <laughs> he knew. So the god got it from the writer. The god got it from the writer. That's exactly it. it. Was it was it was one of those dumbers like, hang on, that's really its plan, and and by by the way as well, right? They introduced this device. It's the device that they use to separate the spirit from possessed objects. Mm. Okay. And Phoebe just comes out and says, oh, we have a device that all lets us separate, you know, become a ghost. And I was thinking, what? Mm. Well, you don't have a device. And then they show that device. I'm like, that should kill you. Like, you would think, like, separating spirit from body is death? Like, like hmm. it, that shouldn't work the way it does. And it's weird because... Um, uh, not Bill Murray, um, Dan Aykroyd's character was talking about how, how he is desperate to know what it's like to be a ghost. And Phoebe introduced that. If they have a device that can safely separate your spirit from your body for two minutes and then go back in, he would have done it. Really, it's mm. like, it's it's nonsense. It was just like, oh, now this device can do this reason because she wants to spend time with the ghost so desperately to be what, see what it's like in her world. Mm. I reckon you could competently separate your spirit from your body if you played uh, the female Ghostbusters to someone. Possibly, yeah. Your soul would flee. It, it, my soul did want to leave my body when watching that movie. That is true. Mm. So it was just like, not only that, not only did the, the, the fact that the device can now do it and not die and everything felt forced, the fact that she would be so desperate to be with this ghost, right? Mm. After barely having any interactions, is it, what, two interactions with this ghost? Maybe three at most? I think, yeah. Like, like, One of them was trying to shoot her. Which, oh, no, I'm talking about the, the female, female ghost. Yeah, remember in the pizza Oh, place? yeah, 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 that's right. And then she invites her into the, into the building, mm. okay? And then the ghost reveals that it, it's in conjunction with the evil deity. And I, it, it seemed like the plan was to her to get into the um, Ghostbuster place mm. and just release the ghost from the thing. Mm. But no, that wasn't the plan. It was this other convoluted thing to get Phoebe separated from the body so the god could to overtake her to speak the words to get him free. Mm. Also, how is the god, you know, flying around, freezing the streets, talking to the ghost lady if he's trapped in the ball? Because, the ball because he, the, the influence could seep out, but not fully. Mm. Yeah. And, and so that felt just dumb. Mm. I was just like... And the fact that, you know, she's doing this thing, it felt really risky. It's like, this is a potential suicide and you're going, going that far to do that. It's just like, it felt 
unearned. It didn't feel like a, that seems like an act of desperation where the only other choice you got to do this versus death almost. Where this is just her selfishly saying, I want to spend time with my ghost girlfriend. Mm. But also it's misogynistic too. The whole mm. the whole process of that happening, right? Because that know. machine separated uh, spirits from objects. Okay. So they're admitting women are objects. <sighs> Shocking. Awful. So in terms of the relationship, right? They're not overt about her being gay, but they certainly have the signs. And then the fact that she would risk her life to separate her body just to spend a few moments with it, it was like, yeah, okay. And sometimes, uh, like, in terms of LGBT representation, Game of Thrones worked brilliantly, Brooklyn mm -hmm. Nine-Nine and everything. This one felt out of left field because there was no indications. for, And there was... She's got the Asian friend who's basically crushing on her all the time, mm. right? And it felt like, again, this was just put in for forced diversity, basically. Probably. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no it doubt at this point. Yeah, yeah it wasn't definitely. necessary, um, and it felt a bit pandering. Mm. It wasn't like I said, like a slap in the face. It's just very alluded to. Well, they, 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 they. Uh... They didn't exactly explicitly say it, but they put literally all the signs there other mm. than saying it. So yeah. they had the music playing, they had all the... Yeah. 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 And, uh, all right, so... That's one of the moments where I was like... Eh. There are a couple of other weird moments that just felt forced and wasn't really earned. Mm. The uh, possessing um, ghosts. The mm. possessor. The possessor. There's, a, there's this little weird red puff of smoke ghost that can jump into any object and possess it yeah. ends up being somewhat important to the plot but not because there's one moment where it gets free and they are playing the um the voice uh, mm. the chant that was recorded from you know the early um uh, 1900s and suddenly that ghost goes crazy to try and kill br break the thing tries to steal it well was it trying to destroy it or trying to get it away i thought it was trying to destroy it it did kind of seem like that, but hmm. But maybe, oh look, maybe it would work if it actually was trying to steal it, mm. and uh, and then get someone. But the thing is, though, it was already playing, and out in the open. Maybe it needs to play near the the sphere or ball to for release the god. Yeah. Why did it stop? Why did the, the possessor stop? That's the, my question because it felt like more. It was trying to break it because it. Because when the thing got broken, you see it broken, mm. it stopped trying to take it away from everyone. Mm. And so I was like, is it trying to help them then? But then it tries to kill them. Yeah, true. Well, well, that's the thing, though. It did jump at the... Oh, it's trying to help. Because yeah. remember, it jumped at... Uh, it Like, it threatened Dan Aykroyd, mm -hmm. right? And it moved, its, it moved the garbage bag with the thing yeah. to the lion, then mm -hmm. possessed the lion, probably to destroy it. But then the people stopped them. It threatened Dan Aykroyd, and then it tried to kill the girl who would later on free the god. So you reckon it was trying to help them in the sense it was trying to stop the god, even if it meant killing the people. Yep. Prop Hunt was trying to help us all along. So then why did it try and kill them after the god was free? Because the god could control them now. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe it didn't like being controlled. I don't know, because then it jumps in the proton pack at the end of the film and literally tries to kill someone. Yeah. Yeah, and so, to me, its motivations were just like, which side is this thing on? It felt mm. very random and arbitrary. Mm. Uh, the fire guy, like, I've, I'm not a fan of this actor. I think he maybe he could do a good job, but most of the films he appears in, it's just, is annoying. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I don't find him funny, and he was just thrown in for comic relief. And... I think, look, maybe that's just me because I find him annoying. If if the same lines were delivered by an actor that, I don't know, maybe can deliver them better. I think there was some humour there. Because you did chuckle at some of his lines. Uh, I wasn't particularly... I didn't find much of what he said funny. What was, mm. There was something there that did make me genuinely laugh. Mm -hmm. But I can't remember what it was. Yeah. Mm. Um, and then, of course, he was the character that... Oh, I remember what it was. Mm. Um, the Firemaster. Yeah. Uh, it's because that's a callback to the first oh, Ghostbusters. Okay. When someone asks you if you're the master, you say yes. You know. Uh, okay. Ask. Okay. Um, the moment where there's big dramatic tension, where the evil god is looming over them, he then he starts awkwardly sliding down the pole, robbing all the dramatic tension. It's one of those stupid Hollywood moments where they think is so funny. Is that Joss Whedon's fault? Uh, uh, maybe. You know the quote. Like, the quote? Like, I know. Yeah, John, where he is like, for heaven's sake, throwing a joke. Yeah. That's. I think Joss Whedon can actually 
manage it better. Yeah, way better. Way better. Buffy's great. Uh, like, and know when it's appropriate and when it's not. Like, like that moment where Hulk just punches um, uh, Thor after they crash the thing. That was, yeah. that was gorgeous. Perfect. Loved it, right? Mm. Now it's... That, this, were, this was like a big dramatic moment where they're facing off against the god mm. and they're sh you want that dramatic tension to remain and it's robbed completely by this goofy idiot. Yeah. And it's just like... Ugh. There was a lot... And also, he was part of another symptom of problems in this movie. There's a lot going on. Like, way mm. much. I think, yeah. I think way too much and it draws out and it's too long. I, like, I was just getting bored. Get to something interesting or mm. more dramatic happening. Mm. Uh, and as a result, like I was getting checked out, and then when the god finally releases, like, oh, we're well, here, fight, all right, but I'm, I'm done already. Mm. And uh, the silly actions of, of Phoebe to, uh, you know, uh, kill herself or not, which it was such a dumb, stupid choice that didn't feel earned at all, mm. already kind of was just making me check out of the film. Uh, and then there's the way that they defeat the, the god at the end. The, so. Phoebe, right, they're preparing for the, the evil god to arrive. Mm. And Phoebe is like saying, all right, we've already, someone already tried to shoot it with a proton pack. Didn't work. Mm. And she has this great idea that they used copper to mm. uh, trap the god. Mm. And so what if we... <laughs> copper plate the... Copper plate the, I don't know, some transistors. They were nickel, that they... nickel and... What was the other one? Yeah, they were nickel something based. But yeah. if... Uh, and so she gets brass because or bronze or that's whatever they they didn't they didn't have Some enough copper <laughs> yeah but something with copper in it right mm. melt it down dip her proton thing in it mm. right and uh, she's basically ready to go mm. why didn't they do it with anyone else's proton pack they had like they show this big bowl of all this you know uh, mm. bronze ready to coat everyone else's proton packs it didn't seem hard once it's melted ready all right grab everyone else's dip yep, it in give it a dunk. Yep. But they don't. And it felt very... You know why they don't? It's, it would be too logical. Because she has to be the hero that saves everyone. Mm. And and even though it would be... like You could achieve that result by having her come up with something clever to save the day. Better than just everyone being stupid in the scene and not doing the obvious thing. There was one thing that kind of pulled a little bit back from that, though. Like, she did have to be the hero... But remember, like, at the end, she's, like, losing control of things. Yeah, and so and her they family just... stepped in. Like, that's a good... I could appreciate that. Kind of. It felt a little lame. Where Apart like... from the fact that Paul Rudd's the stepdad, it's a bit of a family, <laughs> nuclear family situation. It is, it is. And, like, there was an attempt at the um, father achieving, the, mm. the, you know, the affection of Phoebe being... And she calls him dad at the end. And I was like, you almost made my heart feel something. Huh. But it, it was... It didn't feel fleshed out enough. Speaking of someone who's had several stepdads, I wouldn't call him anything but asshole. Maybe his name if he was a nice guy. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, that no one fixes their packs, which would have been really obvious, mm. right? And it's like, uh, okay. And then, and then also, like, the god arrives. They all know that their regular proton packs won't work. Mm. They've tested this, but we'll just shoot it with more proton packs. Mm. Everyone's there, big shot. But you know who's not there? Phoebe. Mm. When, like, hang on, you're not going to be with the group when the god evil god arrives? Mm. She's just getting distracted doing something. Oh, she was talking with the girl downstairs, yeah, the ghost yeah. girl. Yeah, She was hot. <laughs> Get it? Because she was fine. She, she she's right there. Check her age. I don't know if I'm going <laughs> to prison. 21 years I'm not old. going to jail. Oh, yeah, you, you dodged a ball that time, even though you walked flat into the first one. <laughs> Look, hot is analogous with beautiful, and she is a beautiful. No, young she's lady. not Oz. Yes, she is. No, no one is beautiful I until they're believe, like, they're all doing, ugly and gross. We're doing the meme. She was seventeen, you sick bastard. Yes, yeah. yes, that's right. There we go. And and on top of that, when you get married, every woman other than your wife is but ugly. I'm not married. You have a girlfriend. I'm not married. <laughs> well, when you're married, that's the standard you need. Okay, to fine. Okay. I will. I will. I will forego all aesthetic judgments good yes <laughs> it's a it's a dangerous world out there oz you gotta protect yourself against the internet yeah <laughs> i'm helping you this is me helping you here. that's fine <laughs> i'm sh okay yeah she's awful she's, she's awful. horrible terrible oh yeah that's I don't right. want to look at her exactly it's like i had trouble watching this film because of that it was just like too much I... okay <laughs> uh. all right so 
there was for a lot of forced moments in the end to try and justify her having the hero moment where she comes in and saves everyone, which felt cheap, I, I, I claim, and uh, robbed the you know impact. Of, and and then okay, so the god, the god's evil god ghost plan is to uh, release all the ghosts that are in the uh, Ghostbusters vault that they have mm. collected. I was going to say over years, but they were like, basically they only okay. operated in the eighties for a couple of years. Mm. Then they stopped mm. because they couldn't find any ghosts. And only since the last film, the previous one to this one, are ghosts starting to come back a bit. Mm. So look, it still seems from the time they operated, there might be some, you know, number of ghosts in there. And the God wants to release them to have a ghost army mm. is, is the ghost's plan. Mm. And so when he gets to the, um, uh, Ghostbusters headquarters, it ends up breaking open, starts to break free, and uh, um, Dan Aykroyd's character is the one's like, no, like, because they try and trap, Phoebe comes in with her proton pack, mm. it, she's kind of trapping the god because her one works because of the copper plating, whatever. Mm. Um, Bill Murray tries to trap it with a trap, and he's like, we need a bigger trap, and then Dan Aykroyd's like, oh, we already have one, it's the, it's the vault down there. Mm. And I'm like, all right, I, I see the vein of logic where you're going, Problem is, you've shown that your vault is like this dr massive drum container and has this huge crack in it now. Mm. And they reverse the polarity? I don't know. Like, like they do something. <laughs> they, it was a one in a million shot, like the Holdo maneuver, you know? But what's really bizarre is like when they, all they had to do was press a few buttons, pull it down, and like, hang on, you need, usually need to like insert the traps into a funnel. Um, Would have made sense if maybe they had to hook a big like valve hose thing to it mm. and pull it out that which is the same entry but the fact that it's cracked open on its main side did not make sense that that had a suction ability to function as a trap yeah and I... then when it gets pulled in it magically closes and seals him in yeah that was very convenient <laughs> very convenient <laughs> like because even if they could reverse the polarity of sucking right they turn, what happens when they turn it off? There's still a massive hole in your thing. Mm. <laughs> but this time it just magically closed. And I was just like, I'm sure. All right. All right. Mm. And it's just things like that that robs the potential payoff, mm. uh, which they could have just, and it could have been easily sold by just bullcrapping a different reason. Like, yeah, get a hose or something that sucks it in normal thing. There's not a crack in it or you know, escaping some other reason. Any number of things. Could have lured it back to the old place. Yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah. the new place where they were doing the experiments. Something like that. So also the fire, uh, so the annoying guy, mm. who is, he's the descendant of the fire people that fought the god in ancient times, mm. it's revealed that he basically is a pyromancer. He, he has firepower yeah. because reasons. He could, and then he can barely move a candle, but when it's convenient to the plot, he can stop a proton energy beam and mm. redirect it. And he then the force. He just he suddenly can do it uh, because he. He tried, hmm. and now he can with basically no. They tried to give him a couple of hours practice, but I felt like it was just Deus Ex. Now I can do the thing because the thing. Yeah. And so Phoebe traps her with her proto pack, and then he suddenly is shooting fireballs at it mm. in a fire stream, trapping it uh, because reasons. Mm. Um, but remember, like they had this weird lead up with the ghost, where the ghost has uh, a match and it's the match that she accidentally you know used uh, uh, and burnt down her home and killed her family and uh, they already allude to the match is there and she tries to light it and then it disappears and then but then it's back in the thing again then it's back in the thing yeah. yeah but because now she wants to she lights it and provides the flame to the fire guy to do mm. the thing because convenience well i mean you could chalk it up to like uh well, for one, the, the thing's clearly magical. Yeah, it is, yeah. She threw it away and it's gone. Mm -hmm. So I can believe that, like, the whole thing of it not lighting is something to do with her inability to, you know, move uh, on. Yeah, and... something like that. So I, I, yes, I guess. I, I, like, I just wasn't feeling that. It felt a yeah. little, again, artificial to, like, oh, conveniently, I don't have the fire because my lighter fluid's out. Mm. And then, well... And I, as soon as that happens, like, yeah, you've been foreshadowing hanging a lantern on the fact this ghost has a match thing with one match in it people one match mm. and now he needs a a small flame to do his fire thing i wonder where he's gonna get that it just was obvious yeah why not just have him fire bend the bloody uh proton stuff i don't know i don't it's know it's like i'm sure that's probably hotter than well it seems like fire worked against the the god thing so just get a flamethrower they're a bit easier to make than 
proton energy beams. Yeah, but if it's about heat, we saw at the very beginning that thing melting through entire buildings. Remember? Yeah, when they're I chasing mean, it, why not use that if it can? Yeah, it can block the regular proton, you know, energy laser beams, yeah. but not fire. Not fire. Just fire is is its that's its weakness. Well, regular fire can't melt the dude, but yeah, like, something, something. So I'm trying to make a nine eleven meme. Sorry, guys. That's inappropriate, Oz. So I never forget. <laughs> So overall, th those are some of my main gripes with mm. the film, and it's the t one of those films where, if I think about it more, I, I tend to see, oh, there's that issue as well, and then mm. there's that, and uh, it, it, it gets a little deeper. You, I think your point was also apt, which I'm going to re-emphasize again, that it just felt like so much was happening. Yeah, like, way much. Like, like, there was the thing, was it Winston? Or the, is he the other Ghostbuster? Is he a black guy? Yeah, I think so. I forget uh, his name. They just, they brought in so many characters and they e gave them Exactly. All, yeah. There are heaps of characters where there was the black girl who was interested with the son and she's doing some types of tests. And then Winston has this other research thing. And then the son is also trying to capture Slimer because it's uh, like dripping goo. And then the girl is off doing like a, uh, playing chess with this other ghost girl mm. while they're running tests on the orb and it's mm. freezing people and a lot is going on and it's all kind of bland and dull i was only able to understand it because uh i'm on uh adhd tablets <laughs> but i i got i gather I, even i knew that there was too much going on you know yeah, yeah. so yeah and those are my reasons for kind of just like yeah i, I in terms of the specific like it wasn't really great, and I, look, I, I think the actors, they did what they could with the, you know, material they had. Mm. The film ends with everyone celebrating the Ghostbusters for saving everyone. Yeah. And the problem is, like, no one would have seen them save anyone. In actual fact, it would have looked like all these problems came from the Ghostbusters HQ, because the city starts to be frozen mm. big energy ghost beam breaks out of um ghostbusters hq because that's when they they break their containment thing the ghosts beam. start to fly around mm. and if i was like oh there is this strange evil magical frost that's freezing the entire city and then i see like a death beam mm. shooting out of the ground with apparitions and ghosts i would think that looks like it has something to do with it. Mm. You would almost think that they're causing it. Oh, well, not that the people in the city would know, but uh, the ice stuff came from the ocean. Yeah, yeah. That, but there's people from the city wouldn't know they that. They wouldn't know that. And, like, the first two Ghostbusters film, where, like, there's a bad thing there, and then they get the Ghostbusters to go to the bad thing, mm. people are already watching, and they stop it, and they celebrate. Yeah. No one is watching anything. Bad things are happening. Signs like it's coming from the Ghostbuster. Yeah. It ends... And everyone's like, the Ghostbusters saved us. And I'm like, how do you know? You didn't see. Yeah, it's like if you saw the US military leaving the World Trade Center before the plane struck, <laughs> then you'd be sus. You wouldn't be like, yeah. Yeah, that was better. Thank, right? thank you for that, Oz. Never forget. And so the celebration at the end also felt a bit undeserved. Mm. And it's like, and it would have worked better if that, like, you know, people were like, oh, no, the, there's the evil ice god and the Ghostbusters rock up like they did in the first two films. Like, I ain't afraid of no ghost and, mm. you know, do the thing. One thing that genuinely annoyed me, that asshole who released the ghost in the first one is now mayor for some reason. I know. Like, what the hell? What? Uh, they just needed a, a cheap antagonist, by the way. Another tangent plot thing that they throw in. And then, uh, then Bill Murray comes in to question the fire guy and throw pens in his face because... Why? Uh, s separate plot. Yeah. Uh, and uh, ta another tangent. And then they go to the library to learn about, you know, and conveniently the librarian knows everything about the ancient mystery that they need to learn about the ancient god. A language older than ancient Sumerian. Yes. Which is like, we don't even understand it properly. There's only four people in the world that know this. Luckily for them, yeah. this random librarian has all the information there. I'm surprised they didn't bring in that one of those five people and be like, oh, you know, he's somehow connected to bloody <laughs> Ghostbusters. <laughs> and, yeah, and so that's kind of the, a very rough summary of some of the main plot points of the film. And mm. uh, I, uh, it didn't work for me. Yeah. Mm. And can I just say also, in my mm. defense, Your Honor, and members of the jury. I thought Carrie Coon, the, the mother, was pretty hot too. <laughs> and she's like 50. Doesn't show though. Oz is now on a watch list. Hey, but I'm also <laughs> on a cougar watch list. 
hey, have you seen it? Let's know what your, your thought in the comments below. And uh, I'm interested to see how well the film does overall because mm. the box office is already languishing. And I don't think this has the hit mm. to get word of mouth to get people interested. I'm just like, and it's a pity because it's mostly inoffensive and they yeah. were respecting the material. It's just, for me, it fell flat. Yeah. But people will enjoy it. You mm. enjoyed it. And I so, enjoyed it. And so that might give it the legs it needs. Yeah. They, these days, if I'm not like just immediately offended you know by how they try to warp reality then mm. i'm just like yeah okay i can forgive a lot of it water in a drought what you sound like um uh, a battered wife <laughs> when lost in the desert <laughs> one takes such water as they can drink you know you've been abused so much your abuser finally just says hey you look nice and you're like ah, I'm, yeah i'm yours again basically <laughs> 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 all right those are our thoughts on Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, and as always, stay on watch.